Hi, everyone. I'm Carlota Pico from The Content Mix, and I'm excited to be here with Beatrice Fossati, who is the founder of The Feed Group and has almost 20 years of experience in marketing. Welcome, Beatrice, and thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Carlota. Thank you so much for having me. Super excited. Yes, we are excited to have you as well. <laughs> so let's just jump straight into the interview um, and start talking a little bit about your background and your previous roles in social media and marketing um, internationally. So, yeah, I mean, as you said, I mean, uh, I have like a 20 years. I mean, it's, it's very tough to say that <laughs> because uh, here, here, I mean, I oh, run a lot. So, I mean, um, I've been like in the past 20 years in the marketing field, especially like uh, in uh, in world of, I mean, initially in the world of media, um, working with radio and TV, and then I moved to digital, uh, which was like uh, becoming the next, the next thing. Yeah. And so um, I worked for Luxottica, um, and uh, other fashion brands. So yeah, it's uh, it's been an exciting journey, definitely. Because uh, I saw many, many things changing, uh, also in terms of media and uh, uh, formats, social media growing, uh, because I also I, uh, I then I, I, I start and I, um, on, uh, in, in 2012, um, in, the, in the field of social media, where it, were, it was very, um, at an early stage, I mean, if you compare social media in 2012 and if you take a look at how for instance a facebook facebook page looked like in 2012 compared to now it's like it's 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 incredible so yeah so um, working with very big companies and uh being exposed and uh through a great audiences it was a, it was an exciting journey so um, I can only imagine. I mean, in 2012, the networks were a completely different worlds. I mean, Instagram hadn't picked up yet. TikTok didn't yeah. exist. We see new upcoming networks come out of nowhere every single day. And as social media experts, we're just expected to know how to work them and get an audience going immediately. Yes. It's such a big challenge, right? What do you think has been... Um, what do you think has been the most difficult network to learn and to attract an audience to? So basically, um, I mean, at the very beginning, actually, was it was easy to get new audience because everyone was excited, was very excited about each and every platform. So and uh, like paid media was not ramping up so much, and uh, uh, the algorithms were still something like they were manageable, yeah. and uh, and also uh, the access. To, to big companies, to, um, to paid social and so on and so forth, it was like very limited. Um, when now, I mean, things like uh, are getting very crowded, each and every one of us can even spend like some money like backing up one of their posts on Facebook and Instagram. So um, I would say that one of the most, uh, most exciting like uh, um, channel to, to grow was Instagram. Because uh, uh, once it has been acquired then by Facebook, I mean, uh, it, 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 changed it, it changed so much like uh, in the way it was, uh, it was managed. Because initially it was like something like a very, a very uh, young startup, like with lots of ideas and, and things like this. But then it became like uh, part of a huge group where uh, they wanted to speed up and like uh, put it at the pace of, uh, of, of Facebook, obviously. So, yeah, that was, like, a very interesting, like, uh, um, very interesting to observe how it changed throughout the, the time. I couldn't agree more. I remember back in the day when people were asking what the purpose of Instagram was. Um, because on Facebook, you could already upload photos. You could already upload videos. So a lot of the audience was like, well, why do I want another network where I could just do the exact same thing? And now it's booming. I, I mean, I, there are very few brands out there that don't use Instagram as a channel to push their content out to new audiences um, and to keep their audiences already engaged on. So talk to me a little bit about the feed group. How did you go from retail fashion to the feed group? And let's start off with a brief explanation of what the feed group is. Okay. Okay. That's totally a fair question. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was, um, that was definitely like uh, a brave move. And, uh, but then 
uh, in life, there are moments in which uh, you're ch kind of a uh, challenge and, uh, and there's someone that like says to you, now or never. I mean, or also yourself, you're saying to yourself, now or never. So that was the, that moment for me. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I, in the corner of my mind, I always had like this, uh, this desire and, and dream to put my knowledge, like my 20 years experience and uh, the, the background that I have at disposal to, of smaller communities and small businesses. Mm -hmm. Because uh, there are lots of small businesses out there with uh, great purpose and uh, uh, great products and messages and things like this, but then they don't have actually the ability or the background in terms of communication to put themselves out there in a proper way in which that, that will help us help them to, uh, to be more visible. And, um, and that like, uh, led me to, to create a feed group. So the feed group is like, it's, it's called a group, <laughs> uh, because it has a multifaceted like identity and it's a multifaceted product project. It's, um, it's a group because, uh, it goes and it touches different verticals. Uh, I wanted to focus on small businesses, but in different areas. So for instance, um, I want to focus on small businesses that are actually driving change. So helping to drive change and, and our project with purpose. So I'm definitely linked to the world of agriculture, for instance. So food, uh, organic, everything that um, actually can uh, change also the behavior of the consumer uh, in terms of and. If we change from a consumer perspective, then also this will have an impact on agriculture and also now ultimately on our planet, mm -hmm. if you want to see like uh, on a wider scale. Yeah. Um, and then like um, also, but then, I mean, in, I saw that I, I could be useful also for other categories, not only, not only, uh, not only agriculture, but also like professionals or startups that have like the same, uh, the same purpose. So, I mean, the principle is working for purpose because also the feed group is like, uh, um, feed it's, uh, it's nutrition is, uh, is benefit. It's, uh, it's wellness. I mean, to feed, uh, and the feed also is, a, is, a, is very attached to the social media world because the feed is where you read the news and where you get updated and you get the news and, and fresh. So my former boss used to, to say that I, uh, my former boss, uh, uh, she, she, she used to say that I have the, the antenna so, um, to capture things and, uh, and news and so on and so forth. So, I mean, feed, it's, uh, it's, also, it's also for this reason. So to provide, to capture and, and to give information, provide information, provide nurturing uh, to uh, clients and ultimately consumers at the end. Okay, so what you're doing is you're building a network of different creators um, yeah. in the creativity field that you put together in order for them to act as service providers or as recipients, um, and you're focusing on social impact type of companies. Is yes, that exactly. Okay. Yes, that's that's totally correct. So, um, I mean, the rise of uh, of freelancers, uh, like in 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 the rise of uh, and the amount of freelancer uh, is uh, is definitely right is definitely growing in in the last few years, and um, but then also uh, freelancers are kind of alone. So we need to build a network. So yeah. I thought like uh, it's a uh, it's a good idea uh, to find like. Uh, um, different um uh professionals uh based on the project that we're that, that we're looking for and, and that we're looking at and taking care of so so we spoke already a little bit about the type of companies that you're attracting to your network can we also speak about where those companies are based or the type of languages and markets that they operate in so, I mean, uh, I'm at a very early stage, I have to be honest. So the thing is this one. So um, it's very different. So it's surprisingly different where they come from because uh, um, actually um, I'm also uh, opening to being like digital and on the web. I'm also uh, opening to, uh, to, to new uh, scenarios and possibilities. And, uh, and I'm also with a little 
a bit of serendipity, I'm also accepting what is coming in. Uh, so um, I have like clients from Italy, obviously, because uh, uh, what I like also, especially in, in the field of agriculture. But then uh, uh, when we talk about Project Good Purpose, um, I, I recently also joined a platform uh, that, uh, uh, that is called Work for Impact that is uh, uh, based in Hong Kong and uh, they're connecting me also with uh, other brands uh, that are um, working with purpose uh, across the globe. So I'm definitely open like, to, to explore uh, many different many different scenarios. Also because out there, there are many good ideas. <laughs> That's very true. So let's, let's take one step back and break the conversation into two parts. On the one side, let's talk about the feed group and the activities that the feed group is taking in order to attract a larger audience to its brand, especially because you're just beginning and you're a social media expert. So I'd love to learn about your strategy. And then later on in this conversation, let's talk about the services that the feed group can offer to other brands as well, um, led by yourself as an expert in social media. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, taking a huge leap and like, uh, and like from working to, for a company to working for yourself, if it's, it's a big, uh, it's a big thing. And also working on, uh, on the self, uh, purpose. It's like, it's totally a different thing. So for me, it was like, a a, a great, like, uh, journey to to start working on uh, content pillars that were leading like uh, they were leading the feed group so going to the core uh, for me was like a journey also into myself like in discovering what like uh, what were the values that were inspiring the feed group also because this is straightly linked to to me but then it relates also with the with the with what is happening in the world right. so um what i'm trying to do now is like uh, building like a uh, content pillars that can relate both to uh, consumers, like final consumers, because on social media, what I like to do is like to position the feed group also as like a, a community that is, is able to inform people. So people can follow the feed group to get information, to get updates and so on and so forth. But then on the other side is like taking the experience with the clients and like, and show uh, and and show what what they what they do and like tell their stories uh, tell the stories to the people in a way that, that they can be like also well known and uh, um, from to an, a totally new audience. So right. basically, um, what I would like to do is like also to 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 create the feed group as a also as a content hub. Okay. Uh, everything it's like a. As I said, at a very early stage, still a lot of work is uh, is uh, is behind like the curtains. So so there's a there's a lot of things to do. In terms of to the to your second question, like uh, the the things. Let's uh, let's go for the second question just for the moment, and let's focus on the feed group, and then we'll move into the second question as well. So that way we can give structure to the interview and focus on one thing, and then move into the services that the feed group can offer to other brands. Um, I still want to focus on your strategy, if that's okay with you. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. No problem. <laughs> okay. So when it comes to strategy, what channels have you chosen to promote the feed group on? Is it Instagram? Is it Facebook? Is it TikTok? Is it another network? What are you focusing on? Are you also doing other content marketing strategies? For example, blogging. Is that part of your strategy in order to get the word out? Yeah, absolutely. So blogging will be, will be one of the, like, the core um, of uh, of the strategy, like because uh, mm, I would like also to to work. Uh, I've been studying like also journalism for the last two years, like uh, investigative journalism, and so um, what I um, what I'm I'm willing to do is also to provide analysis of of what is happening in the market and uh, and inform also the market of what what is in what is happening uh, and. Uh, and um, and how I mean they can act uh, based on on the on these informations. Uh, then on the other hand, I mean Instagram will be key definitely, and uh, and the role of Instagram will be uh, definitely much more about storytelling and uh, and trying to create a contact and uh, to create conversation, uh, but with like a, a more kind of native content and authentic content. While Facebook 
is going to be more um, a news hub uh, where um, I can, for instance, um, uh, repost or like give a view on certain news or um, give a point of view on uh, on things that are happening uh, and uh, and again starting a conversation but on a different level. Uh, if uh, if Instagram it's it's more like content based. Um, native content based the other the other facebook will be uh, uh other people others other people content plus obviously the blogging because i mean uh pushing also the blog and the contents of the blog uh out there okay to begin with are you just going to start with one language are you going to focus on italian since you're italian as well and that's um part of your part of your target audience um and then as you move forward are you going to localize your contact content adapt your content to more audiences or how are you going to um structure the next steps of your of your business so basically what i would like i mean initially i started to think that uh i mean italian was uh, was was the core so i wanted to i wanted to start to build italian and then um, as a second step as i have like the, the pulse of also of the audience that is following me then i will understand uh if uh, there is a need of uh, of uh, internationalizing, let's say, the content or or not. Um, at the moment, I will keep it in Italian, uh, also to to be uh, faster, to be like on it, like uh, um, more um, given also the time that is uh, that, that we have all available. So I, I just wanted to 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 make it like fresh and uh, and uh, and update it as much as I can. Obviously, I mean, content adaption takes time and, and also uh, translations and so on. So um, I will see. But then first I will start with Italian, definitely. Okay. Sounds great. Um, so let's move into the feed group and the services that the feed group can offer to potential new clients. So right now the feed group is focusing on Italian, but obviously brands work internationally. Would yeah. you also be available or would you also um, be up to offering content to potential clients in other languages besides Italian? Yes, definitely yes. So I mean the I mean the strategy of the feed group like uh, online it's not necessarily what I'm going to offer to the clients. I mean my international experiences uh, allow me to be able to to offer like a international service so so that's definitely one of the things so in terms of services that i'm going to uh that i'm going to offer is uh one is definitely social media consulting because uh this is my core and uh and this is this is my uh has been my job in the last uh, seven years so uh i love it and then uh, working with purpose on that side it's uh, it's super exciting on the other hand what i'm what i'm interested in and also i'm deep diving into this like it's uh it's analysis so um my background in marketing allow me also to uh work on um have a look at, at your scenario i mean as a client i have a look at the scenario clients uh, competitors um and and see what what could be your next step? So um, strategic consultancy, let's say. Uh, yeah. Then there is content production with uh, with the help of um, of uh, uh, of the network uh, of producers and creators, and uh, and then there is um, uh, there's creation of of project co creation of project together. So That's what I'm yeah. Um, what I'm doing now, for instance, with uh, um, with um, honey producers in Italy, uh, they, they do organic uh, honey, and uh, uh, they're very young, but then uh, they are very uh, strong. Uh, and, uh, there are a couple of girls, are very strong, and then they have like um, this uh, this huge project that um, goes also online, which uh, which is related to bee adoption. So I'm also co-creating with them like the the project in a way that I'm a kind of accompanying them like uh, in creating like the strategy for this project like uh, and uh, delivering this also to stakeholders that can support them like uh, in funding or sponsoring and so this is uh, this is the thing and uh, 
I actually worked with um, a few honey producers in Ukraine uh, during a content marketing campaign that I did there uh, a while back for Develt, the German newspaper. Um, as a social media expert and as a person who now provides consultancy, uh, cons consultancy to different brands worldwide and especially in Italy, what tool do you think is missing in this area? So um, I've been always struggling to find a tool that does everything. So because uh, mostly when, uh, um, when looking for um, social media tools, I was uh, realizing that there was that thing that was missing that uh, for some reasons for um, everyone says, yeah, because the API doesn't allow us to do so. And so, um, so possibly I think that uh, the, perfect, the perfect social media tool like for planning, uh, monitoring uh, uh, has to be invented uh, still. So it hasn't been invented yet. So uh, you have to always mix different, different platforms and, uh, and different tools for uh, if you want to be specific on and, and have specific results because uh, no, no, none of them out there does everything. But that's also, that's also the interesting part. As an innovator, do you think you might venture into the wonderful world of technology and building social media tools for your clients? Yeah, who knows? I mean, I'll be, I'll be definitely like, uh, as an advisor, I mean, I can definitely advise on, uh, on the things that for, from a social media, media manager perspective don't actually work because, uh, because sometimes, I mean, products are, are being produced by, by company, but then sometimes, I mean, there's a, the lack of direct experience on, on certain things. So uh, having like a, a focus group with real testers is, could, be, could, be, could be very, very useful. So interesting. I would love that. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. We are moving um, into the last part of our interview, which is a set of rapid fire questions. Um, to begin the set off, I'd like to ask you, about a tool or an application that you can't live without? So basically, um, as I said, I mean, social media, uh, planning, uh, uh, scheduling and analysis tools for me are fundamental. So these are the key uh, uh, to get me to the world of, uh, of social media. Right now, I mean, social media has become uh, a world full of data. And uh, if you don't, ha you don't have like... A, something that um, disclose uh, and, and give you a wider overview of what is happening, it's very difficult to take track of what everything that is happening. So, so uh, I recently, um, I, I love to experiment and one of the, the platforms there I recently uh, joined and uh, I really like is Content Studio. Okay. And uh, also because it, it allows uh, many integrations with other, with other platforms. Okay. And so, yeah, for what I'm, I'm going to do, this is going to be a very useful tool. Okay, awesome. Thank you. What about a marketing influencer in Europe that you currently follow and admire? So, um, I love a lot of creators uh, in terms of, um, I mean, they, they could be called like also marketing influencers because also content creators are actually uh, creating a, a, a lot of uh, uh, elements for marketing. So, yeah, I would mention uh, like uh, designers like Francesco Cicolella or um, or Giuseppe Ragazzini. So these are, I mean, content creators that keep my uh, imagination and dream kind of alive uh, in terms of what is possible to create online. There's nothing like an Italian pronunciation. It's beautiful. <laughs> I wish I could uh, talk that well in Italian as well. <laughs> Okay, well, we are uh, moving into the last question of our interview, and that would be a valuable European group or event that you constantly attend or that you think could provide a really good return on investment for your clients. So uh, there are two different angles to see this because, uh, I mean, there are local, uh, local events uh, and like kind of local but international events that are happening i mean one of the one of the events that i've been um, taking part like uh, a, a few years ago was can lions uh, mm -hmm. and that was an amazing experience 
because uh, actually you get in contact with so many uh, agencies across uh, across the globe and that's uh, that's, that's super exciting on another level there's a um, uh, uh, company um, that is called talent garden here in Italy and uh, basically they have been uh, opening like uh, uh, schools and and uh, and um, uh, co-working in many in many cities also across across Europe and uh, they're organizing a lot of events they are organizing a lot of events uh, uh, for innovation so in digital so if you want to know and, and some of them are free so there are perfect like um, perfect moment uh, to know people to depend like the knowledge about mm, uh, different aspects of technology and uh, and, uh, and it's very useful both for professionals like that they work in, in the digital environment, but I've seen also uh, other type of professionals joining those uh, those meetings because I've seen lawyers, I've seen uh, uh, um, company owners that obviously need to be updated on, on digital. And so those meetings are very, are very useful and precious. Okay. Well, I know I said that the last question was the last question, but I have to ask this one because you're the first entrepreneur that I'm interviewing as part of the series of interviews that we're going to be launching in the content mix. And therefore, I need to ask you about uh, a piece of advice that you would give to young, inspiring female entrepreneurs in the marketing world. So, yeah, uh, definitely don't let fear beat you. So um, one of the biggest challenge is to face fear because uh, the fear of the unknown or the fear of uh, I cannot do this or who I am to do this uh, are questions that are often like coming up in your mind, whatever age. Uh, it doesn't mean, it doesn't, uh, it's not the experience that you have on your back or it's not, these are questions that normally uh, uh, are coming up. So one of the, the, the follow your heart, follow, your, follow what you feel it's good for you. And uh, whichever experience is going to, to be, that is going to be an, a great experience that will lead you to, um, to even if it's not like a, a successful business, then it's going to be like a successful experience because, uh, it will give you big, uh, big shoulders. <laughs> Definitely. Well, that's a great advice and a great note to end up uh, on our end up our interview on. Thank you so much, Beatrice, for sharing your insights with us. For sh for sharing your insights with the community of the content mix. We can't wait to see what the feed group has in store next. I will be following your group very closely, and I Me wish too. you the best of success, the best of luck. I'm sure the best is yet to come and follow your heart. So thank you very much uh, to everyone for listening in. For more perspectives on the content marketing industry in Europe, check out thecontentmix.com. We will be publishing interviews just like this one every week, so keep on tuning in. See you next time, everyone. Thank you so much, Beatrice, again. Thank you. Thank you, Carlota. Bye. Ciao.